Amen. Tell it to Jesus. I'm glad tonight we come. We will take prayer requests here in just a few moments. And, of course, we'll tell the Lord about it. Amen. And uh, certainly he'll listen to us if we'll tell him and talk to him. So it's so good to be in the Lord's house. This is the last Wednesday night of year 2017. Uh, so this will be the last Wednesday night we'll have service. One more service. Actually, two more services in uh, uh, 2017, Sunday morning and Sunday evening. So looking forward to closing out the old year and entering into a prosperous new year, we hope and pray. If the Lord don't come back, and I'm hoping he comes back. Uh, before 2018 wouldn't that be wonderful you know what he could come back before this year's over he could come, he could come back before this night's over and uh, certainly we should be uh, yearning and longing for that day of his return if we don't I feel like those that's not looking for the return of the Lord aren't ready for him to return and certainly it pays to be ready we all need to be ready because he's coming soon amen well let's take uh, a moment to go to the Lord in word of prayer and ask his blessing to be upon uh, the service tonight, and we'll take prayer requests in a few minutes, and we we'll continue to pray for our shut-ins, of course. We always like to remember and ask prayer for them, and pray for, um, continue to pray for the Cox family. Uh, Paul Cox's funeral service will be, be this coming Friday, um, so it starts, the receiving the friends at one, is that correct? I got it wrote down in my Bible, and then the service will be at two, and that's at Lake Boyne Baptist Church up off of Highway 9 on the other side of Bowling Springs. All right, let's stand if you would, please, and we'll go to the Lord in a word of prayer. We'll let this blessing be upon the request that we've mentioned, and we'll take further requests here in just a few moments, and that's uh, just ask the Lord's will to be done and bless us as only he can. Uh, Brother Dennis, uh, Bishop, if you would, would you pray for us? Amen. Remain standing. If you would please turn your hymn books, page 125. Page 125. I'm glad that peace we have in Jesus Christ. We'll sing the first, the second, and the third verse. Page number 125. Wonderful peace. Far away in the depths of my spirit.
for that peace we can claim tonight through Jesus Christ. He gives us that peace from the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. Amen. I'm glad one day that spirit came down. It was an all-consuming fire. consuming fire from the Holy Spirit burns in me exposing all my wickedness these blinded eyes could never see striving out my own desires Letting Jesus rule instead Spurning all those filthy rags That I call my righteousness All-consuming fire Burn till there's nothing left but you Take me to the upper room, fill my hungry heart, make it new. Flame of holy fire, touch me till I burn like Now this fire has changed me and brought me to this reality that even at my very best I'm still altogether vanity It's only as I yield myself a living sacrifice to Him. So then my life has meaning. Then I, I have a reason to live. All-consuming fire, burn till there's nothing left but you. From the smoking embers, bring forth a vessel you can use. Take me to the upper room, fill my hungry heart, make it new. Flame of holy fire, touch me till I burn like you. Take me to the upper room, fill my hungry heart, Lord, and make it new. 
fire Touch me till I burn like you Touch me with your fire Man, boy, we need to be touched, that's for sure tonight. And I believe if we get the upper room with him, we'll see some action take place. Amen? Amen? We'll get somewhere in a closet, get somewhere in a good prayer room, in a prayer place, in a good prayer attitude. Just seek God and ask God and desire God, crave God, want God, and he'll do something in our lives that'll make a difference. I believe that with all my heart. And I believe it'll change our attitudes. I believe it'll change our countenances. I'll tell you, I've never seen the day in the time of my life that people that seemingly have no joy whatsoever in Christ. They just don't seem to have no happiness. Seem the bottoms fell out of their bucket. They got down to the end of the rope and there wasn't no knot in the rope. But it's not about us hanging on. It's about him blessing us. He's promised to keep us and to hold us and to take care of us. And I'm telling you, folks, that'd be one thing when you get our spiritual joy back. Amen. In the Lord. All right, we're going to take prayer requests. We'll get the the microphone guys, you got all kind of guys now. You got guys, wise guys, and they got uh, roofing guys and building guys. Now we got microphone guys. And uh, we take prayer requests. And even though we got the microphone, pre uh, I started to say preach, uh, but speak uh, distinctly and speak slow and, and pronounce your words well. Okay, young lady. Pray for my mama. Okay, that was good. Pray for my uncle. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Brother Roger? Remember Charles Huffy Robinson. He's, uh, he has some type of spurs and he's in a lot of pain. Okay. Sure will, Brother Roger. Brother Bill? Need to pray for Thelma, Braden, and Buddy Nance. Okay. Anyone else on that side? This is Tammy. I have two brothers that are not sure that they're where they need to be with the Lord, and I want to put them on the prayer list. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Miss Martha? I covet your prayers that y'all would continue to pray for me. Okay. Uh, just thank you for remembering me. Okay. I know that God's healing power is able to abundantly above what I can even think or comprehend. Amen. Sure will. Praise for Miss Martha. She's been having some problems with her blood pressure, so keep her in your prayers. Anyone else on this side? Okay, anybody in this section? Linda? Margaret Epley called and said her nephew, Johnny Simmons, they found a mass on his liver, and she said, ask the church to pray for him. Okay. Anyone else in this section? Cassie? Tim's headed that way. Um, pray for my dad's brother, Gene Wheeler. They only give him hours or maybe a day to live. So pray for him and um, his two children and grandchildren. Okay. Anyone? Oh, okay. Talk. Pray for my family because... Before we went to Christmas break, she fell off the monkey bars and hit her arm, and she went to the nurse, so she had to go home. She went to the doctor, and the next day we went to school. She had a broken arm. Okay. All right. Anyone else in that section? How about this section? Uh, Brenda? Pray for my granddaughter. She has colon cancer. Oh, really? Oh, my. I don't know when they're going to operate on her. How old is she, sister? 22. How old? 22. 22. My, my. All right. Make that a special request. All of them special, but please remember and pray for that. Sister Becky? Just pray for my grandchildren that I can somehow get them back in church. Okay. Brother Edward? Um. <clears throat> She's been praying for mom. She's been having some issues. Um, she's got a doctor's appointment tomorrow, so just pray for that. 
Okay, pray for Miss Emma. Frankie. I continue to pray for my children and grandchildren, and also, especially my son, Tim. The trial will be coming up sometime in January, and we're not looking forward to that. So, And he needs a lot of prayer because he's, he's had a rough time, and he needs to get right with the Lord's what he needs. Okay, let's pray for him. Anyone else? Nathan? I pray for my mom and dad. Okay, buddy. And my mom. Okay. Bailey. Pray for my family. Okay. Anyone else back that way? How about on this side? Oh, Melissa here. Um, continue to pray for Angel. And um, I have a, a need that I've been praying about for a little while. And the Lord just pray that he'll give me the answer or he'll answer that need. Okay. All right. Uh, Vesta? Millie called and said that she's not feeling well. She's got several health problems that they're battling with her. Cheryl's sick, and she said Chuck Bennett was at the doctor's office too, so pray for all them. But I have a praise. Um, Y'all know my grandson Cameron. I've been praying for him, and we've not seen him in a while. And I was at Food Line the other day, and I saw him. And I chased him down, and he promised me he'd come to see me New Year's. And I praise God, because that's an answer to prayer. <laughs> Y'all pray that the Lord will deal with him, because he needs the Lord really bad. But, you know, people get out there, and your children and grandchildren think, what you said, you know, the world's got so much to offer them. But I praise God, at least I got to see him, and I can still be a testimony to him. Okay. Anyone else? Ms. Norma? Uh, just remember our family at this time, especially Harold. He's having a really hard time with a lot of this. Okay. All right. Anyone else on this side? Okay. Unspoken requests tonight. You may have them upon your heart. The Lord knows all about those two. All right. Well, thank you so much. We'll have the uh, uh, ushers to come forward and we'll receive the offering tonight. Remember to pray for the requests that was been mentioned. I know we can't call them all by name, but the Lord knows all those that were mentioned, and they will be in the um, bulletin on Sunday. They try to get all the names that are called out on Wednesday night. They try to make sure they have those names in the bulletin on Sunday morning so you can get a copy of those and pray for them not only just one time, but several times every chance you get an opportunity to chat. So let's ask the Lord's blessing to be upon the offering. Pray the Lord to bless it. To use it and take it for his glory, for his honor, and the Lord Jesus to bless it. Brother Jack, if you would, would you pray for us? Yes. Yes, Lord bless us. Only you can. Yes. Yes. Granted, yes. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jack.
Skip it. Bill wasn't waving at me back here. Let's stand up. We'll sing that last verse. What a day that will be. Sort of our theme song, I guess, around here. Amen. There'll be no sorrow there. There'll be no sorrow there. No more burdens to bear. No more sickness, no pain. No more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. And what a day that will be with my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. It's going to be a wonderful time, folk. What a wonderful time when we get over yonder. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Don't forget uh, the funeral service is coming Friday for Mr. Paul Cox. Pray for the Cox family. Pray for the brothers. And they, didn't, they didn't have any sisters left, did they? No sisters. But pray for Kenny and Smiley and, and David. And pray for his wife. And, and uh, pray the Lord just comfort each and every one of them. And meet their needs during this time and then of course uh continue to pray for donna donna's had some problems and issues and and not feeling well tonight glad she's here i think she said she pulled a muscle in her back and that's not pleasant that only hurts when you breathe amen so uh, you pray for her and pray she'll get feeling better don't forget to sign up for next wednesday night's meal don't forget this coming sunday night sunday evening uh we'll start our sunday evening service at uh, eight o'clock and uh we're looking forward to that service, and we'll be having a watch night service. It'll be from um, 8 o'clock until 12 midnight, and we'll have a break in between that. They, I think they're going to have a sign-up sheet back there for some soups and sandwiches and whatever else you want to bring for to have between the, the services. So you be, you be sure to come. Brother Tim be speaking for us. Brother Robert be speaking. Uh, Brother Jerry be speaking. Brother Chad Wisher will be with us that night. And he's one of our missionaries, and he has some uh, children. They, they, uh, they do a good job on singing. They'll be singing for us that night. And then Brother uh, James Burgess will be with us uh, on that night also. And Brother James probably more likely will be singing for us. And so we're looking forward to a good time. Now, I'm telling you, uh, those four hours will pass by quickly. And uh, you'll be surprised how quickly they pass. And uh, so we want you to come, make plans to be with us. And don't forget, it starts at 8 o'clock on Sunday evening. I'm going to make another couple of uh, another announcement. It's going to be in a little bit in the future if the Lord don't come back. But to own, I think it's going to be the second Sunday in March. I think that's the 11th, if I'm not mistaken, but somewhere around. It is the second Sunday in March. We're going to have Geraldine and Ricky's going to be with us on Sunday evening. And uh, as far as I know, that's going to work out. And uh, so you pray. And uh, y'all know she's a nut. And... Uh, it's a lot of fun. It just really is. I, I, you know, I think Christians ought to have a good time. We, uh, we'll see them on the cruise before actually they'll be here at the church. And, but anyway, we went last year was on the cruise, and we just happened to pull up right beside her at the dock when we got there to get on the ship. And she was standing outside of her car. And just to show you, she's quick. She's witty. And, of course, she has that. Her little buddy, Ricky, is a, is a not, you, don't, you don't call him a mannequin. What do you call him? A dummy, a dummy, dummy. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, we got out of the car and she's standing there by herself. And, and uh, I said, where's Ricky at? She said, well, I heard you's going to be on this ship. And I didn't figure we'd need but one dummy. <laughs> so, so she's pretty weak, uh, quick and witty. And uh, she's a real blessing. And by the way, pray for her husband. Her husband is in the nursing home and um, in real bad shape. And she's having to stay with him a lot. And so pray for her. And I think she's 
through, through I've heard through conversation with some other people that know her pretty well, uh, she's having some uh, financial burdens too, I think, and unable to, to go and do the ministry that the Lord's called her to do for many, many years and unable to do that because of her husband's condition and her having to stay with him as much as possible. So unless something happens there, it goes wrong there, she won't be able to come. She'll probably be with us on the second Sunday and uh, Sunday night in uh, March. So keep her and you keep her husband in your prayers, if you would, please. The Lord just meet their needs and take care of them. And also pray for, uh, how many of you remember Brother Mike Upright? He's sang for us two or three times here at the church. And Brother Mike done a great job. He lost his wife about three weeks ago. And uh, they hadn't been married very long, but she had Lou Gehrig's disease, and she passed away about three weeks ago. And uh, Brother Mike's having a, a difficult time uh, just by the conversations and the texts and the messages that he puts on on Facebook. So let's pray for uh, Brother Mike Upright also. And I told Brother Alvin McAbee about it a moment ago. He knows Brother Mike and asked him if he knew his wife passed away. And Brother Alvin said he did not know that and didn't, hadn't heard that. And uh, Brother Alvin was sharing with me. He said, well, you just don't know how difficult that is until you go through it. And uh, Brother Alvin is still having a difficult time with that. His wife passed away three years ago, and it's still uh, bothering him. And, and uh, he just... He just said, you just wouldn't know how it is until you go through it. And he said, it's, it's, he said, it, he just said, it's terrible. It's awful. But anyway, pray for these men and pray God will bless them and comfort them, helping them. And other people that have lost loved ones this past year, I know it's difficult. But I just want to say we had a wonderful service Sunday morning. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the service. And I think everything just went, went to wonderfully. And, and the service was, was the candle lighting all was beautiful. And uh, the fact that we got to uh, recognize and and honor and remember those that have gone on to be with the Lord in this past year and some in the previous years. But we had a great service, had a good spirit, and uh, just I, I just enjoyed it so much. And uh, so glad that we was able to have that service and, and uh, looking forward to doing the same thing again next year if the Lord doesn't come back and we're still here and we're still trying to do what God would have us to do. So praise the Lord. I thank God for what he's done for us in the year 2017. Amen. I can look around at that night and I can tell you he's been good to every one of us yes. and he's blessed every one of us and every one of us in this building has got reason to praise him and thank him and, and give him glory and exalt him and lift him up and uh, just give him all the praise and honor that's due his lovely name. Yeah. So we cer he certainly has blessed us and been good to us and looking for some greater things this coming year. Amen. Yeah. I think, hey, the Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish and I want the people of Emmanuel Baptist Church and I want us as a church and a church family and as a ministry to have a vision, a vision of seeing lost people won and saved and birthed into the family of God and saints being encouraged and strengthened and growing in the things of the Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking forward to that. And I, I have a, I want the Lord to help us always have a vision uh, of what the Lord's going to do for us. So Jesus, keep every, all of us in your prayers and pray for the work and pray for the church. Turn your Bibles, if you would, please, uh, tonight to the book of Luke chapter number 23. Luke chapter number 23. I'm going to read verses uh, 39 down through verse number 42 tonight with this thought in mind. The math of the cross. The math of the cross. Now, I know you've heard this. Probably have heard it several times. Probably heard it many times, maybe, in some cases. That the math of the cross is uh, two pieces of wood, uh, three nails, and one cross equals forgiveness. You've probably heard that. You've probably seen that on some church signs. And maybe in bulletins, you may have run across that phrase and how that they do the math of the cross in that case, in that instance. And I thank God for that. I thank God that there is forgiveness through the cross. But tonight as we look at this portion of scripture, I want us to look at doing the math on the cross just a little bit different. And we probably won't get... All the way through it tonight, but anyway, we'll get as far as we can, as far as the Lord allows us to go. And uh, as we begin, we'll start off with this text, and we're going to read in 20, uh, Luke 23, 39 through verse number uh, 42. The Bible says in verse number 39, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou not fear God? seeing that thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, 
for we are received the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he cried unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with thee, thou, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Let's pray. Father, we love you tonight, and we do thank you, Lord, for the privilege that we have to be in your house. Now we pray you'll bless the reading of your precious word. I pray the Lord Jesus be exalted and lifted up. Lord, I pray you'll get all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. Pray that you'd bless, Father. Thank you, Lord, already for the good songs we've heard. Thank you, Lord, for the good spirit we felt and the good fellowship we've enjoyed, the good meal that we had. Lord, it's just so good to be in your house today on this Wednesday night. Thank you, Lord, for this day and time that's set aside that we can come together and worship and gather together as your children, Father, to give you praise and honor and glory. Bless now in all that's said and done. May we just, uh, Father, may we just honor you and we'll thank you for all that you do for us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we look at this portion of the scripture that I just read to you, we're all familiar with this, with the thieves that's been on the cross that died there alongside the Lord Jesus Christ. Considering the math of the cross in this instance, I think we can see this and say this about this concerning the cross. The cross here, we see subtract, subtracts one from hell. That old boy was on his way to hell. He was hanging on that cross, doomed and damned and on his road to hell. It was just, just, just this close to going out in eternity. But we see as he spoke unto the Lord Jesus Christ, he called upon the name of the Lord and he said, remember me. And then the Bible tells us and shows the Lord said today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Let me just say that old boy didn't have any life to live after he got saved because not soon after that he was in eternity, but he was in eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though it wasn't very long, but thank God the cross made a difference in that boy's life in order that he could get to go to heaven and be saved. Let me just say tonight that the cross is needful in every person's life. The cross is needful for every person that walks upon the face of this earth. Every person that's in this building this evening is, is in need of the cross. And oh, thank God for that. We see the Bible tells us in John chapter 3 and verse number 36, it says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God shall abide on him. We see that every person, every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, every nationality, I don't care if you're uh, Russian, Chinese, Japanese, Hindu, uh, Muslim, I don't care whatever you are, you need Jesus in your life and you need the cross. And I thank God when those that trust in the cross and come to the cross and get saved by the grace of God, they're taken out of the ones that are going to hell. I'm so glad tonight that I'm not going to hell because I've been to the cross and I've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And if this old boy on the cross could tell us anything tonight from the portals of glory, he'd say this, I'm so glad I got in. I waited to the very last minute, but I'm so glad I got in. You know, people today, you don't have to wait to the last minute. Some people, you say, preacher, do you believe in deathbed repentance? Absolutely I do. That, that, that was deathbed repentance right there in that old thief on the cross. He knew he was going to die. Now, most of us, we don't know when we're going to die. I mean, it can happen at any moment, happen any time. We can be in perfect health, and we can just pass off of this scene just in the snap of a finger, and we don't know when we're going to die. But this old boy knew he was dying. He knew that he was going to die that day. And he was able to recognize that the Lord Jesus Christ was the one that would be able to help him and deliver him from a death that would send his soul to hell. And people today know that they're going to die without Christ and go to hell, but yet they keep putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off, and putting it off. Everybody needs the cross. And let me just say, you don't need to put it off. It needs to be now. We see that you're either saved or lost, and everyone needs the Lord Jesus Christ in their life. And let me just say this, not only in that old boy's life there was it needful, but let me just say, secondly of all, it was instant. Hey Amen. It was instant. Hey, hey, I, hey, when he said, today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. Now, isn't, that a, isn't that a comfort? Can you, can you only imagine what kind of peace might have flooded that old boy's soul that day? I mean, he knew he was guilty. The Bible tells us there in, in uh, verse number 41, it said, indeed, justly. For we received the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. So that old boy was there. He said, I'm guilty as guilty can be. And you know, that's what we have to do when we come to the cross. 
We just have to admit that we're guilty. But God offers out free pardons for those that come to the cross. Hey, thank God. He'll declare us righteous. He'll forgive us of our sins. And as, the old, as, as many have said many times, the word uh, uh, justified just simply means it's just as if we'd never sinned. But it also carries the meaning that we have been declared righteous, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me just say concerning this old boy's life, hey, he became instant. He received uh, that eternal life instantly. The Bible says in John chapter 5, in verse number 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death into life. Oh, what a comfort and what an assurance that is. Hey, I don't, have, I don't, I don't wonder and I don't think if I'm going to be in heaven. I know that I'm going to be in heaven one day. Because of the faith and trust that I put in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason that tonight that we can sing that song that we just sang a moment ago. What a day that will be. Because of our relationship with the Lord. And because the fact that the cross came into our life and took us off of the, off of the road, so to speak, of hell. It put us on the road of heaven that we're one day going to spend with him. And the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11, uh, down through verse number 13. 5, 11 through 13. In 1 John, the Bible says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that come by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And these three are bear witness in the earth, in the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave us. Verse number 11. And this is the record, that God hath given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. I, I, I believe with all my heart, you've heard me say this before, if you've heard me preach any, uh, any uh, much at all, that I believe that once you get saved is when your eternal life begins. As far and I, I know this flesh is going to die. I know this flesh is going to give up. It's deteriorating every day. You can look in the mirror and say all that. I mean, it's, a, it's, a fading, in the, it's fading by the wayside. It's, you can just tell. You can see what's happening. You can see what's taking place. But let me just say this, folks. We're not home yet, children. They have the, we have the assurance because of the cross and we accepted him and he took us out of hell and put us on heaven's road. That we don't have to fear what's going to happen once we get there. We, the Bible, the songwriter says we'll be in a land where we'll never grow old. Hallelujah. Seems like every time now somebody has a little ache or pain, they'll say, well, that's what happens when you get old. Vesta was talking to me today. said something about she got forgetful. She said, you know how it is when you get old? I said, not yet. I said, I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> Amen. Say, hey, hey you, you ever heard the saying, you're just as old as you feel? I think sometimes we put ourselves in the grave too early. I really do. I really do. We, 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 hey, look on the bright side. Hey, you're far better off as far as this life is cursed. And listen, I know Paul said, hey, to die is gain. I realize that. But I want to stay around here just as long as I can. Just until Jesus comes back. That's all the time I want to stay here. But let me just say, hey, you're doing all right when you're on this side of the grass. Amen. And we ought to give God the, we ought to give God the glory and the praise for every breath that we take. Uh, on this side of eternity. What a blessing that is. Turn your Bibles, if you would, please, over to the book of 1 Corinthians. And uh, chapter 1. I'm going to read verses 18 down through verse number 25. 1 Corinthians. Chapter number 18. Keeping this thought in mind. Hey, that the cross had subtracted one from hell. They're just in the thief's life. Chapter number 18. I'm in 15. That ain't going to work either. I did, but that ain't, ain't going to work. Chapter 1, that's where I'm at, yeah. See, I told you I didn't forget nothing. Chapter 1, I'm headed there. What would y'all say? <laughs> yeah, praise the Lord. One, in verse number, chapter 1, verse number 18, notice what the Bible has to say. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. 18, yeah. The Bible says, for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. 
But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Can I stop right here and just say this? That the only way that we could ever have been saved is by the power that's in the redemption plan of the Lord Jesus Christ. We could have never done anything for ourselves. That old thief could have never gotten off that cross and done anything in order to be saved. He was in a situation that only God could help him. And can I say tonight that every one of us has, was in a situation that only God himself could help us. And I don't know about you, but I thank God for the preaching of his word. The preaching of the word showed me that I was on my way to hell without Jesus Christ. And if it were not for the preaching of the word of God, none of us would have been saved. Because the Bible says it's by the foolishness of preaching. Now listen, I believe God can save anybody, any way, anyhow he wants to. But I believe with all my heart, somewhere point in time in their life, they had to hear a little bit about the gospel of the Lord Jesus. I believe a person can get saved by hearing a song. I believe a person can get saved by you witnessing to them and telling them about Jesus. Hey, there's been many a Pope been one on a personal relationship, one-on-one, -on -one, somebody witnessing to that person, them getting saved. There's been a lot of people gotten saved that way. Hey, they wasn't in a church. They wasn't in a church service. They wasn't in a revival. They wasn't at a sunrise service. They wasn't at an Easter or a Christmas cantata. Hey, they were just out in the world and somebody witnessed to them and they got saved by the grace of God. But they shared the message of the gospel with them and they got born again. And I thank God for the preacher. But we live in a time of the day now that people don't want no preaching. They want a sermon at so they can get out in 10 or 15 minutes, get in their car and go home and feel like they've done something. Just a little of the, they just want just a little enough of the gospel to appease their mind a little bit and let them go on. But listen, we need the preaching of the gospel. And let me just say, there's not a lot of preaching going on now. But the Bible says that it's the power of God. Verse number 19 for it, is, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing for the understanding of the prudent. For where is the wise? Where is the scribes? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. There that is again, that phrase again. Oh, thank God for that. Verse number 22, for the Jews require a sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And I say amen right there. Amen. How true that is. Oh, so many times we think that we're so much. We think we can do so much. But listen, we can't do anything without God. He's our strength. He's our help. He's our guidance. And let me just say, even people in this world, they think what we're doing here tonight on Wednesday night church, people in this world think this is foolish. They say, I don't, Believe in that stuff. You go to witness somebody and say, I don't want to hear nothing about that. They'll say, I, I, got no, I don't have time for that. There'll come a time in their life that they wish they'd have taken time. You know why? Because if you don't take time God, for God here, you're going to end up in the pits of hell. You don't hear that mentioned much anymore. They don't want to warp the minds of our children, our young people, but yet they'll let them watch all them destructive video games and everything on TV and all that kind of gory uh, blood stuff and all that kind of stuff. But they don't want them to hear nothing about Jesus Christ and how that he suffered, bled, and died for all mankind, for all people, for all people, the more they might be saved. So we see this the preaching of the cross that we need. And we see that the preaching of the cross takes those that are doomed and damned and destined for hell, takes them out of hell, those that get saved, and set them forth toward the heaven. I think of all the songs that we have that deals with the cross. And I, I like songs about the cross. I like them cross songs. I like the old rugged cross. Page number 12 in our hymn book. Oh, what a, I like that third verse. Most times we don't sing the third verse. A lot of times third verses get left out, but that third verse is one of my favorite verse. 
how that it, how that it shows the beauty uh, of the death of the Lord Jesus and what he did for us and how that he pardoned us of all of our sins. And that song, At the Cross, At the Cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. I don't know about you. I can remember the day I got saved. I can remember the time. I, I can take you to the place. I can, I can tell you the time. And you well know I can tell you the day when the Lord saved me. And I can go back and think about that. But I remember the day that I found the Lord Jesus Christ and I met, fell at the cross and accepted him as Lord and Savior. And then old Squire Parsons sings a song entitled, Bring Back the Cross. I, I know you probably heard that before from time to time, may not remember it, but he sings that song, Bring Back the Cross. If there's ever been a time that we need to exalt the Savior and lift up the preaching of the cross, it's now. We're living in a terrible, terrible, terrible time. We're living in some dangerous and perilous times, as you well know. In my mind, we face it and look at it and we see. And just when we think that it can't get any worse, you know what happens? It gets worse. And that's the reason tonight that we need the preaching of the cross and bring back the cross. And then we see that song that says, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Amen. I like that song. Just to knowing that he was thinking about you and I. The creator of this universe. One that created this planet. Created all this world. Took time to think about you and I. He wasn't thinking about himself. He wasn't sympathizing with himself, but he was there dying in your place, in my place. The old rugged cross made a difference. We see that the cross is a method of execution. We find and we know back in the Roman times, the Romans used the cross as a type of execution. And, and many times people was crucified. Jesus wasn't the only one ever crucified on the cross. But I believe it's one of the most painful, it, it has to be one of the most painful, agonizing death. There is to be crucified and hung to a cross. But on top of that, he was beaten like no one had ever been beaten. He had been mocked. He had been spit upon. He had been embarrassed. He had his clothes and his raiment stripped off of him. And he hung on the cross as a form of execution. A man that was innocent of all charges against him. You know, they always say anybody that goes to jail is always innocent. When I, and I know what they're saying about that. But I do believe that there have been some people that have been falsely accused. And I believe there's been some that have been sentenced to jail and maybe even sentenced to death that they were falsely accused. It wasn't true what they did. But definitely we know the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was truly innocent of all charges that they railed against him. But you know what? You and I was guilty as guilty could be. But yet he saved us. He loved us. He died for us. Not only do we see the cross as being a method of execution, we see the cross which speaks of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ, sort of what I've already mentioned. And then we see that the cross also speaks of redemption. The redemption plan, that's the plan that God used to bring to this earth and bring to this world in order that we could be saved and birthed into the family of God. It speaks of redemption. There is a cross. People may deny it. And there was a cross and people may deny it. But let me just say, I don't worship the, the, the crucifix. I don't worship the Savior because our Savior is not hanging on a cross. Hey, thank God he's, he, went, he did die. He went in the tomb. He came forth from the tomb. He's living now, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and I. Hey, he still lives today. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. So thank God that there was a cross and he died upon that cross. So this is, hey, it'll make a difference. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. What a wonderful thought tonight to know that the cross subtracts one from hell. We see it was needful. We see it was instantly. And we see also, thank God, when God saves you, he saves you completely. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it, isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Uh, that uh, the, the thief that was hanging on the cross didn't have to say, wait, time out, take me down and take me down to the river and baptize me. Right. Hey, you don't have to be baptized to be saved. I know a lot of people have been, been baptized and they've been saved. Right. Just by the way they live and the way they act. Baptism will not save you. We do have a baptismal pool up here. 
And, and uh, we filled it up with water yesterday. Thought we had a leak in it. Didn't find no leak, so thank God for that. But there's water coming from somewhere. Maybe God fixed it. But anyway, praise the Lord for that. We do have a baptistry. But we don't baptize people to save them. We baptize them to show that they have been set apart. Thank God that they have been saved. They have been born again. And they have died to the old way of life. They've been resurrected to the newness of life. And they walk a different path in a different way. And they talk different. And they act different. Hey, and they are different. Because the Bible says that he makes a change in us. And thank God for the change in him. And he makes it completely. We don't have to go look and search for something else. First uh, John chapter 1 and verse number 7 says... Uh, but if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. Amen. Amen. Thank God, all sins. And listen, if we was to start taking inventory tonight on all the things that we've done, we, well, first place, we could never remember. And we couldn't call to our remembrance everything that we've done. And I thank God for that. And the Bible tells us once we get saved, once we give our hearts and lives to him, over in the book of Hebrews, I believe it is, in chapter number 10, he says, your sins and your iniquities, I will remember no more. You see, it's not that God can't remember, because God can do anything. He can do anything he wants to do. People say, what's the only thing uh, God can't do? And first thing people say, God can't lie. But there's a lot of things God can't do. You say, what's one of them? God can't refuse one sinner when he comes to him and wants to be saved. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Aren't you glad of that? God can't forsake you. He's already said he wouldn't. Oh, there's a lot of things that we say that God cannot do. But I know one thing. God cannot. And listen, even though we think back and we can maybe remember some of the things that we did and some of the ways that we lived and some of the sins that we committed. And I'm sure that we can. But thank God, the moment we get saved, the moment that we call upon him, the moment that we confess him as Savior, we are saved. You're, more, you're just as saved then as you'll ever be. You don't have to go for a second and a third and a fourth work in a grace. God does it all one time. He does it completely. He does it first. Hey, and that's all you need. He does it completely. The Bible says that we are saved to the uttermost. And the word uttermost just simply means that we have been completely forgiven of all of our sins. You'll find that over in the book of Hebrews also. And we see the Bible tells us uh, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 11. And ye are complete in him. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. I'm glad tonight that God saves us completely. And therefore, we don't have to look for something else. The Bible says in Psalms 30, uh, 37 and verse number 37, it says, Make the perfect man and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Now, let me just say, I know we can't be perfect. Why? Because we're still in this Adamic nature. We still have bad thoughts. We still say things on the spur of the moment that we shouldn't say and, and, and shouldn't even think. And that's what that's what it is. We don't have to put it in action for us to, for it to be sin, because the Bible says to him to know what to do, sin and do it not to him in sin. And God knows the thoughts and the intents of our heart and our mind. He knows what we're thinking right now. He knows if you're thinking about, well, I'll be glad I get to go home. I get to watch some of the bowl games that's on TV, some of the football bowl games. I don't know who's playing tonight. Usually it's nobody of importance, usually in these first few bowl games. But it don't matter for some. They just like, well, and that's OK. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we have our mind fixed on so many things. Why, not, why don't we just think on the good things and realize that even though we're not perfect within this flesh, that we do have a perfect salvation and we do have a perfect author of that salvation. And that's none other than the Lord Jesus Christ that died on the cross, that took us out of hell and made us fit for heaven. The Bible says, <coughs> as we sang that song a moment ago, peace, peace, wonderful peace. And that can only happen by enjoying uh, the, the work of, uh, on the cross that took us out of hell. And then we see concerning that cross when it subtracted us from hell, it not only was needful, not only was it complete, not only uh, do we see that it was instant and in how the Lord took care of us, but let me just say also, that's eternal. Eternal. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life 
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I'm so glad, thank God, that I'm saved forever. Amen. Now, we do believe the Bible teaches, and a doctrinal truth in the Word of God is eternal salvation. I believe I'm saved forever. Now, I don't know, any, I don't, you know, I don't know why anybody would want out once they got in. But some people think you can get out. Now, you listen, you may have never been saved, but you had never been in. And I believe a lot of people believe uh, and use that sometimes to, as an escape goat, so to speak. They say, well, once saved, always saved. If you carry in that attitude, there's something wrong. You've never really had it. You got to really be born again, really have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ to know that you are saved by the grace of God. Look in John chapter 10. This is the familiar portion of scripture. You probably know where I'm going to read. John chapter 10, verses 28 and verse number 29. Notice what the Bible has to say. Let's read verse number 27. It says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Amen. Never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. The Bible tells us that we are graven in the palm of his hand. Oh, thank God. I know that the Bible tells us of the scars that's in his hands. Oh, but thank God for the fact that we're also in his hands. I used to be, used to, well, there still is a song, but people used to sing a song a lot. He's got the whole world in his hands. You don't hear that very much anymore. I don't know. Maybe it's because it's been around so long and old, but it still had a lot of truth in it. It says he's got the whole world in his hands, and he does. He's got the little bitty babies. In his hey, he, hey, I'm glad he's got us in his hand. Amen. And I'm glad his hand is over us, protecting us. And we are in his hand. And he says that no man, any man, cannot pluck. Pluck thee out of my hand. Some people say, well, I can get myself out. Why would you want to get yourself out? The best thing ever happened to you. He took you out of hell. And he put you on the road to go to heaven. Thank God for that. Subtracted us out of hell. We, hey, just think about it. We're one, those that are saved here tonight, we're ones that the devil's not going to get. And you ought to be glad of that and thankful for that. And, and rejoice in that, knowing Thank God that you're never, ever going to a place called hell because he took us out of there. Oh, my, when you begin to think about it, the math of the cross, we see the cross subtracts one from hell. And next week, I'll go into this thought. The cross added one to heaven. Amen? Amen. You couldn't get there any other way. You know, people have tried it many ways. They thought their good works would get them there. They thought their money would get them there. They thought their name would get them there, but there's still only one way. And we see that in John chapter 14, verse number six, where Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Can I say that all those that have money like Donald Trump, and Bill Gates, and all these other folks that got millions and millions and billions of dollars, they got to come the same way that you and I come. And I got a whole lot less than that. But I got some things that they can't see. The songwriter says we have treasures unseen. Hey, we're not home yet though. One of these days, because of the cross, because it took us out of hell and made us fit for heaven, one day we'll see splendors galore. Things that we'd never imagined, the Bible says in our heart and our mind, the thing that God's got prepared for those that love and trust him. Oh, my, just think about that. Oh, there's some beautiful homes, and you ride around through the countryside, and you'll see some sitting out there, and boy, some of them look just like, man, why, why does anybody need a house like that? So it's like it's got multi-rooms, of course. And they have homes with indoor swimming pools. And they have homes with indoor tennis courts. And they have homes with all kind of recreational type stuff. And, all. and listen, that's all good and fine if you can have it. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you one thing, when we get to heaven, my mansion is going to make that look like a caddy shack. It's going to look so small and ragged and tore. That's what God's promised us. And you see, he took us out of hell. You know, and, and you know this part, let me tell you this. 
Hell is really what we deserve. <laughs> but for mercy. Mercy came down, Brother Ronnie sings for us. Pleaded my cause. <laughs> and thank God because of his mercy and his love and his grace, we've been taken out of hell. And one day we have the promise of heaven being our home. It may be tonight, could be tomorrow, could be next week. But I know one thing, it's going to happen. Just as sure as we're in this building. I hope, all, I hope we all go by the way of the rapture. It, it'd be all right with me if I never conducted another funeral service. That'd be perfectly all right with me. Along with weddings. It'd be all right if I'd ever done another wedding. But let me just say this, folk. We know the Lord loved us enough to take us out of hell. Aren't you glad that the math of the cross proves to us and tells us that he's taken us out of a place that we really truly deserved and headed to a place that we don't deserve. Amen. Thank God for the cross and the math of the cross. Let's stand if you would, please. Now, I know tonight that most everyone in this building has made a profession of faith. Made a profession of faith that you're saved. And I certainly hope and pray that you are. But tonight, if you're not, if there's just one little bit of doubt, I would encourage you tonight to make sure that you're saved. I've heard of preachers getting saved. I've heard of preachers' wives getting saved. I've heard of members that have been in Sunday school, been in church for years upon years getting saved. Some would say, well, I would go forward, preacher, but I'm, I'm embarrassed. I've always made a profession of faith of being saved. It's still not worth dying going to hell over. So if there's one here tonight, that you're not saved. You need to come. And I, I know most of you have made a profession of faith that you are. But if you are tonight and you're saved, and maybe there's things in your life that's not pleasing unto the Lord. Maybe you're going through something in your life and maybe you're not serving Jesus like you should. Maybe you're not as faithful to him as you should. You might need to come tonight. If you need to come for any reason, just come gather around the altar and pray and ask God to help you. I'm glad he's the God of, to help us too. Amen. Once he saves us, boy, he, won't, he, don't, he don't depart and leave us. He takes care of us. He watches over us. He blesses us. He meets our needs. Thank God for that. So bless his holy name for what he does. One's come. Anybody else need to come? Brother Buddy, you come and pray with Brother Dustin. While they're praying, let me just say this. I'd like for our church to pray. Pray for some of our people that are out of church that need to be back in church. Use a little insignificant, frivolous excuses. Just quit on God and not come and not serve. Trying to be spiteful to one and another. Let's pray for these folks that they'll just see what they need to do with their life and get back in church. Serve the Lord. And love Him. and Get back where they need to be. Pray God and work on their heart, work in their life. Pray God fill the house of God up. Pray that we'll have a good turnout on Sunday. <clears throat> invite somebody to come. You got a lost friend, bring them. Invite them to come. You say, oh, preacher, I've done that many, many times. Well, try one more time. They might come this time. Don't ever give up on them. Just keep inviting them. Keep praying for them. Let's pray God and put joy back in our heart, excitement back in our soul. We'll enjoy the good things of God. Amen, folks. That's what we need. I remember when you used to smile sitting in church. I remember when you used to rejoice when he was in a worship service. I remember you used to raise your hand when there's a good song being sung. I remember when God used to move in your heart. Let's pray God to restore that to us. David, hey, the psalmist David prayed that. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. David lost his joy. Let's get back where we need to be with the Lord. Amen. Praise his lovely, sweet, and holy name. You be careful going home tonight and be safe. Come back on the Lord's day. Don't forget 
the watch night service starts at 8 o'clock. It'll be in the bulletin on Sunday. And uh, keep up with that and all the other activities. And uh, be praying for the requests tonight that were mentioned. Inspire Hedgen will be dismissed. Brother uh, Charles Owens, would you dismiss us, please? <laughs>